Hello everyone, you're welcome to my channel. My name is Firi of Firi Glams and this channel we're dedicated to teaching you how to make beautiful hair wax. And today I'll be showing you how I made this lovely piece. I call it the crinoline ring fascinator or the crinoline swirl fascinator. Okay, please before we proceed, kindly click on the subscribe button, click on the bell icon. So that you get notified each time we post a tutorial video thank you so for this tutorial here are the materials we'll be needing okay so here are materials over here and um we'll begin with uh, the pop cap that's the pop cap over there it's called a pop cap okay if you don't have this you can use a molded base as well you can decide to block or mold a base and use I think in Nigeria this is sold for 800 naira or there but it depends on your location anyway so we'll have our feather over there we'll have our flower for embellishment you can decide to use any flower at all you like for your embellishment we have our crinoline over here or crinoline as some may call it it's about five yards but I did not finish it over here we have our thread matching color of thread and needle okay if you're using a red a blue crinoline or if you're working with blue color use the same thread we have a hot glue gun i normally use this for finishing if you have uhu gum or uh gum you can also use it or b6000 have our scissors right here we have our elastic band if you have an Ella an alice band you can decide to use it for your fascinator it all depends on whatever you want then we'll have our pressing iron over there. So that's all we'll be needing for this tutorial. So the first step is to remove uh, the thread. There's a thread that normally comes with crinoline. Okay, I, I usually take it off. I don't leave it there at all because I want to get a neat work at the end of my job. So I don't like leaving the crinoline the rope that is attached it's, it's usually attached to one side of the crinoline if you like you can leave yours it all depends on you but i'm just trying to take off mine so what i did was to you know i was having five yards and pulling it out at once may damage the crinoline so what i did i was with my needle and my scissors i was just taking it off bit by bit okay as you can see so once I pull it out with my needle what I did was to cut with my scissors then I pulled it out from the from the edge can you see so that's what I did so if you have a better way to remove the thread from the crinoline it's okay all right but make sure whatever you do you don't damage your crinoline this is very important so that you can have a neat finishing so I'm just trying to, with my scissors and my needle, I just had to. But if you're using a smaller measurement, it's so easy to pull off, okay? But this is in a large quantity and I didn't want to damage my crinoline at all. So just watch what I'm doing, guys. Can you see how neat the edge is? Can you see that? It's very neat now. So this is what I have friends after taking off the rope from my I, fact, I took it out I took out the entire rope from the five years I was having this is what I have can you see how neat this is so that's how I love to work with my crinoline okay so the next step is for us to start ironing our crinoline all right so what we really want to achieve well, basically what we want to achieve is like a bias let me should i call it a crinoline bias now okay so i'm just trying to set my iron right there okay i put it on wool i set it on wool 
I didn't want to set it on cutting it it would be too hot okay so if you're doing this you have to be very careful so you don't get your crinoline damaged or burnt okay so you have to set it on wool so I have to set it there on wool so the next step is to start ironing down our crinoline so the next thing I did was to fold my crinoline into two as you can see I'm just trying to make sure it is well aligned fold it into two that way what we want to achieve is to make them stick to each other okay to make it stick to each other so just watch what I'm doing guys so making sure that the two edges are aligned I started ironing down please if you're doing this you have to apply a little pressure so that you can have a neat binding <laughs> also so please be careful with your fingers as well if you're doing this so gently I iron down just like that just like that okay just like that can you see I'm trying to hold down the two edges with my finger can you see that so so this is what we're trying to achieve can you see so the two the the foldings can you see so it's no longer opening it has now glued like glued to to each other can you see what I have there can you see so that's basically what we want to achieve on this first step okay so I continued with this okay until you exhaust the entire yardage you're using if you're using up to six yards four yards five yards it's so you have to do this is the first step so I just continued that way making sure that both edges are well aligned can you see that's what I'm trying to do because if this does not happen by the time you start forming your rings you may have excess protruding or coming out at the end of the day so you have to make sure that the both edges are aligned and can you see what I'm pointing there and you have make sure that you iron to a point that the edge is becomes sharp enough can you see that because we're still going to iron again we're still going to fold into two again to iron so that's <laughs> So I'm still ironing guys. So you do this until you exhaust the entire uh, yardage you're using, okay? So you do this until you totally exhausted. So the next step guys is to fold into two again. Like, like you're folding into four now, if you understand what I mean. So just watch what I'm doing please. So you fold again, okay? The first step we folded into two. Right now we're folding into four. Can you see what I'm doing? Like you're forming a bias. Like if you're using tsunami for millionaires that know what I that understands what I'm saying. Can you see what I'm doing? So you fold. But right now you have to increase the heat a little and apply more pressure. Can you see what I'm doing? You fold like into four again and you iron down. You press it down, apply more pressure than you did previously you iron it down just watch guys you iron down press it well making sure that the edges are also aligned too like we did in the first step can you see what i'm doing this is just like forming a bias so that's that's it guys 
so this is the second step so you iron down again can you see that the seven inches crinoline has like <laughs> become it is now looking somehow like a tsunami bias so this is like folding into four to iron so the next thing you do once you do that can you see what we have can you see so the next thing you do after this process is to stretch like I'm doing you stretch this makes it to relax okay so once you iron you stretch it you stretch stretch so that's it guys so this is what we have from the seven inches crinoline can you see this so you can use this to form anything loops bows you can use it to design your heart your fascinators in case you can't reach a tsunami or something can you see how this is looking like a tsunami bias can you see this like if you do this it's sometimes it's difficult to tell if it's a tsunami or a crinoline so this is what we guys who have guys can you see how beautiful this is so that's it friends so this is just it that's a result the seven inches crinoline has reduced to something this beautiful <laughs> Okay, so that is it. That is what we have. Can you see how beautiful it's looking? You can use this to make anything, all right? You can use it to design so many things. So that is a five years over there. So that is it. So right now we're going to move over to the next step. The next step is to form a ring. And to do that, kindly watch me. So I so I was able to get the amount that I need. Okay. So I used five yards of crinoline when I was introducing the materials. I had five yards, but I did not finish it at all. So three to four yards should be okay, depending on how how full you want it if you want it fuller you can use up to four yards if you want it a bit scanty if you don't want the rings to be too much or too close to each other you can use three yards of crinoline okay i'll do that and you watch you watch me form the rings and i'll show you what i mean okay so i'm just trying to tag the edge of the crinoline to avoid it from from losing at the end Okay, just trying to tie it up there, tie it together. This is very important so that it does not frill. You know, crinoline or crinoline can frill sometimes. So it's important to tie the edge when you're working with crinoline. All right, so it's time to form a ring. And I just started with a small one. You can make this bigger if you want, if you don't want it too tiny. You can increase the size okay don't fold it too too little so just one step at a time little by little okay if you want the spaces in between to be very close that will make your ring to be fuller uh, yes I'm trying to show us you need to make sure they are aligned when you're folding when you're forming your rings you have to be sure that the crinoline is aligned so that when you are sewing no one is left out like you don't leave anyone behind okay so I'm just that's the third one there okay so this is just how you form your rings guys this is how it goes okay like as you can see the spaces in between the space in between is a bit large I don't want mine to be very full okay so if you want your space to be close, to be tiny, not to be too much, you can use a, you can increase the yardage of your crinoline so you don't fall short. So you can form as many rings as you want. I think I'm just going to be having six here or there about. Okay, guys. All right. So I'm just trying to make sure it, it is aligned. It's very important you do this. 
okay just where my two thing my left uh, fingers are holding that's the spot you need to make sure to hold that place very tight so that it does not lose and you have to so you don't have to start all over again so that's it guys I'm just trying to arrange my rings okay so another thing I'm also trying to make sure that it goes round okay I'm trying to make sure that the edge comes out on the other side as you can see I just pulled it from the back okay because you wouldn't want it to you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to have it uh, coming out when you're sewing okay so I'm just trying to adjust it behind as you can see just trying to make sure it is aligned okay trying to pull that one so that the, the last one can just fit in all right so that's it guys so that is it so I'm just trying to arrange so make sure it is well aligned okay so the next thing we're going to do now if you have it well aligned make sure that the other edge is coming out is protruding somehow to the other side okay so you sew in the middle you don't sew where you tied the crinoline you don't sew the edge where you tied the crinoline you sew a bit far from there okay so that your crinoline does not lose because if you sew on the area if you sew on the edge where you tie it might come you know it might come off so it's important to sew in the middle I will show you when I'm done so our ring is ready friends as you can see can you see how beautiful it came out it came out very beautiful this is lovely can you see can you see this it's very neat so this is the area I was telling you about can you see so that is the part that I tacked I did not tack it at the edge where I tied the crinoline can you see so that was where I tacked so if you're tacking make sure you tack it away from where you tied the crinoline all right so can you see how beautifully this came out so we'll move over to the next step all right friends it's time to fix our elastic band and I just have to apologize for this as you can see, I was holding the elastic on my hand and trying to fix it. And as at the time I was fixing it, I realized that my phone memory was... In fact, I didn't even know at all. I was searching for the video all over my phone. And I didn't realize that as at the time I was fixing it, the elastic, my phone memory was full. And it wasn't recording at all. It was a very painful one. So as you can see, I have already attached the elastic over there i'm sorry about this okay but i will make a video on how to attach an elastic band to your fascinator i did an invisible tacking as you can see the thread is not showing there okay i'm really really sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry all right but i will make a video on how to attach an elastic band to your fascinator and i'll post that as soon as i'm done thank you so much for understanding so right now i'm just trying to i'm just trying to Okay, place my crinoline ring on my base. Okay, like I said, uh, you can use a molded base. Okay, so to be sure of this, you have to place it on your mannequin first. Okay, I was just trying it out to see. You have to be very, very careful on this part because the elastic band has been attached and you wouldn't want to fix your ring on the right wrong side. So the, the elastic comes in the middle. So the ring should go by the side. So I'm just trying to check there but if you want to be sure of this you need to use your mannequin wear the cap on your mannequin then place the ring how you want it okay how you want it then you can use a chalk or a, a needle to just hold it down then bring it out out of the mannequin head then you you tack all right so i'm going to show us that all right i'll just place this on my mannequin head to know the exact location or part where the ring should should be okay this is very very crucial 
you have to if you if you miss it here then it's it's not going to the fascinator may not come out well so i'll just quickly do that and i'll come back to show you all right friends i'm back okay i have tried this on my mannequin and i have gotten the point where i want my ring to be the area all right and so after doing that i had to hold it down with my needle so that i don't lose that spot or that point there so the next thing i'm going to do is to tack down all right you have to tack down very well in fact i had to sew this over and over again for me i don't use candle gum but if you feel it's comfortable for for you to use uh hot glue or any kind of gum it's still okay so i'm doing an invisible tack in there can you see so i'm trying to pass my needle back where the thread came out from that's the invisible tacking okay this is to make sure that your thread does not show on the outer parts of the base because we're not going to be covering that part with trimmings or anything so for you to get a neat work you need to make sure to pass your thread from that same spot where the thread sorry to pass your needle from that same spot where the thread came out from this is to enable you get a very neat job okay guys after sewing this it was a neat one i didn't have to cover with anything okay you need to make sure of that so i'm just sewing the crinoline down to the base can you see can you see the spot there okay you need to tag this neatly so that the ring can comfortably sit on the base okay so that is what i'm just trying to do right there tack 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 you have to tack to the left and to the right to make sure it sits well don't just tack on one spot tack to the right tack to the left but please if you're tacking make sure you don't go too far so that if you're covering with your flower you don't have to start putting so much flowers just to cover your you know your thread so that's what i'm doing i'm just trying to tack down do an invisible tacking okay so just like i said guys i i normally don't use gum when i'm working with crinoline because i don't know <laughs> i don't hot glue is good but if i'm working with in fact i love to tack i barely use hot glue i just love to tack tack tacking is the best for me if you tack your fascinator can last for a long time tack it no matter how you shake it no matter what happens it's just there okay so i'm still tacking as you can see i'm still tacking make sure it sits very well make sure it's it is firm before you proceed to the next step okay just take your time this is very very important okay just tack 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 if you're comfortable with using a hot glue uh, that's it's okay it's not a problem but i prefer stitching so that you can have a firm work okay so that's it guys okay 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 friends here we are we are we're about to attach our feather right now um if you have watched up to this point i'm sure you have enjoyed the process the video so far don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe don't forget to subscribe yes i promise you, you're going to be getting good videos more videos by god's grace so this is where we are this is where we are okay so like i said don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share comment like uh, like the video all right if you want to try this out of course i know you definitely try it out right so it's something you just can't resist all right so you can post pictures on our facebook group we have a facebook group free glance millionary world on Facebook. it's a public group if you search for it it will definitely pop up okay i also have a business page free glams okay if you also search for it on facebook you see it kindly like my page all right like my page like my page don't forget to subscribe so guys as you can see i'm trying to fix my feather i usually tack down so with the wire there you can decide to fix your wire in you know and just curve it around if you're into millinery already you know what i mean but if you can also glue with your hot glue use a hot glue i would have advice if you're gluing you have to use a hot glue okay but for me i love to tack i want to make sure everything is in place okay especially if i'm working with crinoline 
okay sometimes you can have this it has this resistant nature to glue sometimes so just to be on the safe side because i'm making this for a client that's the truth so i'm just taking my time to make sure everything is intact can you see the process so i'm trying to sew i'm just trying to sew the feather down i'm not sewing it down to the base please i'm sewing the feather down to the crinoline or crinoline as you can see the ring is still there like i said that's why you have to make sure your ring is well arranged so everything i'm sewing is on the crinoline I didn't sew it, I didn't tack it down to the base so that I don't have excess thread showing under the base, if you understand what I mean. So I'm just trying to tack it down to my crinoline. So I'm tacking it like a zigzag form so that the thread can actually bind it. Eh? Sorry. Oh. <laughs> so that the thread can actually hold it in place. Okay, I'm sewing under, up, under. You know just below above something like that okay so that is what you do if you love to glue that's okay so i'm just tacking down my feather tacking and tacking i, I make sure to tack this very well this is very very crucial so i'm tacking it down to my crinoline as you can see so after tacking this it was really firm and i had that you know that confidence that it was good to go so just watch guys Alright friends, so the next step, we're almost done, alright, the next step is to attach our flower, as you can see, I'm just applying my hot glue on the flower, then I, um, I put it right on top of the feathers, as you can see, okay, so when you do this, make sure to apply pressure, don't leave it immediately, hold it down, like I'm doing there for some time hold it down so that you'll be sure until you're confident that it has really glued properly okay so after that you just um do the final finishing okay hold it down if you're sure that it has not glued properly just keep holding it down hold it press it down until you're sure and certain that it has really glued very well so after that you I turn it upside down as you can see there were some rough parts so i'm just going to cover it up with my flower as you can see what i'm doing i'll just apply my hot glue there again and try to cover up as i can so don't be in a hurry when you're embellishing don't be in a hurry to just leave your head where that way make sure you cover every part that's that that is not looking very nice and also on this other side can you see i'm also going to cover that up and i'll come back to show you so i've covered up the rough parts okay the parts where the gum the hot glue was showing i've used the flower to cover it up neatly all right so you have to make sure of this so that your work will be very neat very very neat without gum stain or glue stain so i covered it up with the flower the area i showed you earlier okay so the next thing to do is to the next and final thing to do mm -hmm. we are finally there finally finally all right so the next thing to do is to cover up that part there cover the elastic area the elastic uh, the place where i see the elastic all right so that's the final thing to do so the material I'm using, I cut out a satin fabric. I used um, a round object to cut out a satin fabric neatly. So I just apply my hot glue there very neatly. Make sure it doesn't stain it, okay? Gently. So just going to place it there. You can also decide to use an Alice band, okay? But that's if you're using an Alice band for your work, for your fascinator, you have to attach it when you're done, completely done with your work. You either sew or you use a hot glue. For me, I still prefer sewing. You still use the same invisible tacking, which I will show you on a video that I will make 
a video showing how to attach an elastic band I will, I will send the video after immediately after this other video okay so you can use an alice band if you don't want to use an elastic or you can also ask your client if you're making this for sale you can ask the person what kind of band the person uh, wants or prefers to be used for her fascinator so that you don't end up using a wrong uh, band so to place your alice band you can use your hot glue to glue okay i normally don't glue hot use uh hot glue for pop cap sometimes the material can just wear off so i prefer you you sew with needle and thread you tack with needle and thread that will actually help you to stay for a very long time all right guys thank you so much so much for watching thank you so much for for your time thank you for clicking and i hope this tutorial was helpful if it was helpful kindly comment leave a positive comment give it a thumbs up or a thumb up all right share with your friends share in a group okay thank you so much for watching all right thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe like i said earlier you're going to be getting more videos after this yes that's for sure uh thank you so much you can follow me on my facebook on my facebook business page fairy glams my name is fairy tamna fairy uh prince you can follow me my facebook business page is fairy glams all right i'm also on instagram with the handle fairy glams okay it's all about fairy glams thank you so much for watching thank you